Good afternoon, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to address you today. First, I'd like to share a slide from the International Labour Organization. They quoted five basic reasons for companies or employers to hire persons with disabilities. The first reason is they must because of legislation. Second one, they someone asked them to, uh, or they want to do the right thing. Uh, the fourth one is they're encouraged by um, what other people are doing uh, and by persuasion. And the last one is because it makes good business sense. And it makes good business sense because persons with disabilities can be more determined and motivated, and they can provide some stability and sustainability to your business. And this is what we in Janesh team have been looking at with regard to engagement of persons with disabilities. The last and but not least is eventually the uh, person with disability inclined market. I won't address this issue today. First, let me give you a glimpse into what we um, we have been doing. Uh, this video was prepared for the um, for a conference in Geneva, uh, and it's already more than a year old. So some of the information is a bit dated. So what are we? We are a for-profit social enterprise, and we are for profit because we believe that a non for a not for profit enterprise will be difficult to sustain and to scale. If you need uh, funding, um, then you first of all, you need to make sure that every year you get the funding. And if you need X amount of funding every year, if you want to hire twice as many persons with disabilities or 10 times as many, then you need also double X and 10 times X funding. So it's not sustainable, it's not scalable. Last but not least, it accords a for-profit uh, enterprise accords the um, dignity to the people who are participating in it. Next, what we have few we have done is we have created a virtual employment ecosystem within which we can use and apply untapped talent in marginalized communities to provide services for the global market. And because of the of this virtual employment of ecosystem and the way we operate, we can do this with a minimal carbon footprint. So what is a virtual employment ecosystem? First of all, we have a work from where you are model, not just work from home, uh, although most of our employees work from the comfort and safety of their homes, but some of them don't have an environment at home uh, for work. So what they do is they go to a friend's home or a nearby internet cafe uh, to do their day's work. The other thing about this virtual employment ecosystem is because of the way it's structured, it's structured, it levels the playing field for persons with disabilities, especially in the less developed areas, which are away from major cities where traditional employers are, and also where commuting um, you know, in the less developed areas for persons with disabilities can be dangerous, costly, as well as time consuming. So how do we do it? Uh, it wouldn't have, it would not be possible without technology and, inter and the internet that we, as we have it today. We use a lot of collaborative platforms because everybody is all over the place. Um, we don't have people working in the same location. Uh, some of the collaborative platforms that we use are um, platforms like Yammer, Hubstar, Facebook, Google Drive, WhatsApp, Skype, Citrix GoToMeeting, CRM, etc. Uh, we also um, have, uh, we also apply a lot of enabling technologies so that persons with various disabilities can function in this environment. Uh, this includes, of, of course, screen readers for the visually impaired. Uh, and voice recognition software for those who are not able to use uh, their limbs. Uh, we also use a remote access software. Um, the other thing that uh, is a, um, a significant part of this virtual employment ecosystem is the alignment of work processes so that 
people with different disabilities can complement each other in completing, in providing a service for our clients. And sometimes we do capitalize on the heightened senses of persons with certain disabilities. For example, the visually impaired have um, heightened uh, listening senses. Uh, lastly, uh, we have developed, um, and this is still work, very much work in progress, ongoing development of a corporate culture and HR practices, which have to be out of the box because we are just totally non-traditional in the way we function. So what do we do? Um, we do quite a number of things in this uh, virtual employment ecosystem. Uh, on the right side are the uh, businesses that we have launched in the last few years and which are already commercial, uh, meaning that they are past break-even point with stable international clients. Uh, firstly is eCornell. Uh, we are marketing eCornell in various, uh, in this region, and um, uh, we've been doing it for a number of years. eCornell is the e-learning arm of Cornell University of New York. Um, then we have our own uh, brand, Epic Online, is an English language coaching, face-to-face -face online. Uh, you've seen that in the video just now. We already have students in more than 10 countries. Uh, the next column, the center one, is uh, we consider them, consider them startup businesses because they already have eight revenues, uh, but they are not yet um, past break-even points. Uh, that would be uh, Mandarin eSpeak, which is the uh, similar program to Epic Online. Uh, for Mandarin uh, Chinese. And we have um, Abled Online, a remote IT support service. Um, Speaky Online, which is similar to Epic Online, but this is targeted for uh, children with uh, learning disabilities, in particular autistic children. Um, then we have a Remote iWatch, a remote surveillance uh, service. Uh, for which we have our first client in Singapore, which is a dementia center, where we are watching 16 cameras for them uh, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. seven days a week. Uh, the projects are in, in development. Uh, in fact, iRead is already having some uh, initial uh, small amounts of revenue. Uh, iRead is basically we because we have uh, quite a number of visually impaired people in among our staff and our IT people remotely support them. And so we have kind of uh, developed this capability to be able to train and support um, visually impaired people remotely to access the computer and the internet. Uh, the last one there is iRoam. It's a very sexy um, uh, initiative. We are testing uh, using smartphone cameras uh, to guide uh, visually impaired people remotely. Uh, this will be like remote. Uh, this will be like speaking guide dogs. You know, you can say that. So, what is unique about us uh, today? We have about fifty permanent staff, um, of which eighty percent are persons with disabilities. They have different disab disabilities. Uh, they are all over the Philippines, China, Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia. Practically, I think, seven or eight countries, and we are trying to hire in a few more. Uh, because because of the, our virtual employment ecosystem, we can basically employ people from anywhere in the world. About 10% of our English language coaches are persons with disabilities, and 100% of our Chinese language coaches are person, persons with disabilities. Our English language coaches are now from about 10 countries in the world. Our Chinese language coaches are all from China. Uh, more than 50% of our management team today are persons with disabilities. And uh, the significant thing about all this, ladies and gentlemen, is that most of our clients are not even aware of this. They are not aware, the clients and the students are not aware that they are interacting with persons with disabilities. So how do we do it? Uh, this example, would, uh, this is a good example. It's a pilot which we did in Taylor's College here in Malaysia. Uh, in 2011, where we where we actually um, took 50 a, um, students from I think uh, Mara, uh, doing A levels and um, aspiring to go to Canadian universities. So we helped uh, Taylor's College with the speaking part of the English development for them, and uh, did them over a three month period, and uh, and uh, the results were quite significant. Uh, 
Um, I'll show you a slide in a minute about that. Uh, but the um, about 912 hours uh, of sessions were done, and of these 912 hours, 26% uh, was done by um, ethic coaches who were persons with disabilities. Uh, but on top of that, we had more than a thousand hours of overheads, being uh, people who were helping with assessments, content development, operations, quality assurance, scheduling and monitoring, IT support, and account management. Of these thousand over hours, almost 90% were done by uh, persons with disabilities. So you can see the significance of this here. The outcome of this project is, um, in, the, uh, in the words of our client, amazing. As you can see, um, you know, uh, having a majority, a, a significant majority of uh, persons with disability input into the project actually produce outstanding results. So what we do, ladies and gentlemen, we do have some recognition uh, from UNSCAP uh, from a foundation in Europe called the uh, uh, Zero, uh, I think it's called uh, ESSL. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we are also uh, very proud to be invited into the ILO Business Disability Network. We are one of 40 companies and we are really a uh, David among Goliaths. So these are the other, some of the other companies um, in this business and disability network. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest companies in the world are actually engaged in or thinking about or trying very hard or already um, employing persons with disabilities. Um, we do have testimonials from very, some very prominent people and uh, this can be found on our website. We are very often uh, asked, and I can understand, uh, are we a real business, you know, given that the majority of our people are persons with disabilities, I mean, can we really do a real business? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here are some of our clients, clients, and as I, as I mentioned to you, uh, most of them are not even aware that we hire persons with disabilities. So you can see that some of the biggest names in the world are doing business with us. So uh, next would be, how do they do it? How do our persons with disability um, function effectively in this, in this environment? Uh, first of all, this work from home or work from where you are model. That actually immediately removes the biggest um, problem for persons with disabilities because um, uh, they don't have to commute. Uh, the other thing is enabling technologies. I shared some of this early on. Uh, I don't think I need to go into detail about how a, a blind person uses a computer. There's a short video here which I can play. Uh, but then, and then here is one that's um, using the Dragon software, um, purely voice driven, uh, operating the computer and accessing the internet. Uh, of course, last but not least is about sheer determination. Here I give you an example of um, Nadia who is um, uh, living in Bagan Sarai, and um, she uh, grew up with cerebral palsy, and she's considered 99% disabled. Um, she can only use one finger of one hand, and because of this, she has to use the mouse upside down because she used one of her knuckles to click on the mouse, and, um, and in spite of all this, uh, she actually works on two jobs. She has a, she has a full-time job during the day, and she takes a night shift working for us. Uh, she works 14 hours a day to support her family. Uh, Raj uh, is our um, uh, one of our stars. He's one of my main com members. He uh, had an accident and um, uh, has become paralyzed from the neck down. And he's the one that's using uh, the Dragon software. Uh, we very often forget uh, that Raj um, is a PWD because we communicate with him all the time. Uh, Venga, I'd like to specifically mention Venga, he's one of the newest uh, members of our team uh, and uh, he, um, as a result of multiple uh, knee surgeries, he had to quit his job because he was not able to commute to work anymore. So um, he was referred to us uh, by Perqueso, for which we're very thankful. And during the process of bringing him on board, uh, Perqueso also um, intervened uh, in helping us uh, because he had um, 
issues with uh, uh, home situation and uh, some emotional issues that needed to be resolved. Uh, furthermore, um, we did not want to provide uh, a, a laptop because immediately needed a new laptop, and Precioso, Precioso uh, stepped in very quickly to do this. The reason why we do not want to provide uh, this equipment is that um, we have people scattered all over the globe. Uh, if we supply this, we have had experiences where we supply this equipment and two days later we never hear from them again. So uh, we generally might do this if the person has been working with us for a while and uh, have proven to be stable and productive. Uh, he's today an uh, able online remote technician. He's also trained to uh, uh, he's trained to train screen readers. So um, it's such a cool thing that uh, Venga, being a person with disability himself, is able to remotely train a blind person how to use the PC. Uh, Mickey is in China, a uh, very, very bright girl. Again, um, very sad that she lost her sight at the age of 15 due to an illness. <coughs> uh, Maricel is our HR manager, another Mencom member. Um, she uh, was a really pretty girl, um, just about to graduate from college, when the car accident uh, changed her life and uh, disfigured her face and popped both her eyes, both her eyes. So. She's been working with us now for, I think, four years. Uh, started as my secretary, uh, lives in Davao. Now she's the HR manager and uh, looking after staff from 10 countries. Here are a few more. We have quite a number of persons with disabilities. So um, as you can see, they are a mixture of people from different places. Uh, this is Boon King from Singapore. Um, uh, Danny is from China. Um, Wendy is also from China. Uh, Jack here is our our number one uh, technician for uh, screen reader support. Um, he's Filipino. Um, and uh, Angeline here, interesting. She lives in a small town in the Philippines. She, as you can see she was born with one arm. Um, uh, but her internet connection in that little town wasn't very good. So when she was interviewed for a job, she realized how valuable this job was. Uh, she actually constructed a 50-foot uh, pole outside her house and put an antenna on top so that she can get a, a decent internet uh, signal. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this has been useful. And I'm, of course, here um, for any questions, I'll be hanging around for the rest of the day also.